Hello again. Um, today, uh, today this session is going to be a little bit different um, because what I want to do today is not that much coding, but a little bit of show and tell. Um, during this week, I tried an experiment, and it turns out that it works very well. So um, I'm going to keep it. Uh, and uh, well, it's done, but I think it's interesting, so I'm going to explain what I did this week. Um, I had a couple of sessions, uh, the first one was about two hours, uh, it was pretty good. Um, and the second one, it was just clean up a little bit and making things look better. So, what is this about? Um, right, so. I'm using, I, I implemented a double buffer here in um, in the start line, my Spectrum project. Um, so I was already using um, a tile buffer. Do you remember? I explained that in a different session, basically, uh, where I keep record of um, different, so I split the screen in 8 per 8 tiles, uh, 8 by 8 pixel tiles, and uh, I track um, if they are uh, clean or dirty or valid or invalid, which means that a tile can be, needs to be drawn on the screen or not. So basically between two frames, what, what I do is I just draw the differences, so I need to draw less, less things and I can go faster. So I was using that already. Um, so before what I have done, I, I tried to have a, a double buffer. I don't know, I think it's probably more like a back buffer. So basically I try to, to draw, instead of drawing directly into the screen, I was drawing on a, on a buffer. And then I was trying to dump that as quick as possible to the screen. But the set ID that it can make it as as far as I as I want. It can go as fast as I need. So I had to look a different approach. When I tried that, I thought that well, you know, because I have to have uh, the amount of memory that the memory that the video memory has in order to to render the scene and then dump into real video memory. I thought well, that probably means that. I need to use, you know, this is going to be a 128K uh, game instead of a 48K game. Um, but you can still play it in 48K, it's just that, you know, you could be doing multiple, you know, multi-load or, or, you know, it could be a small, it just be a smaller game. Uh, but now, uh, well, I tried that and it didn't work or I didn't get it to work the way I wanted. So... Um, this time I try a different approach, which is basically use functionality from 128K Spectrum. Uh, and it's not just the memory, it's, it's the possibility of using the banks and, and, and bagging, paging. So let me see, let's open some doubles here. So let's make a little a quick explanation. So this URL here, is the source of information from the world of Spectrum, basically. So uh, the set of Spectrum has a 120K has, well, you know, it has 120K of RAM and the set 80 can only uh, manage, can only address 64K which is not actually the memory you have in a, in a 48K spectrum because uh, you have a ROM that has, let's say, the operating system functionality, uh, which is basic and, and, and so you have 48K because you have uh, a ROM of 16K used for that, so you don't have 64Ks. Um, and when you have basically uh, 120, which is more than 64, 
what it does, the spec is provides some functionality using uh, this port here where you can get well, it's pages or banks. Well, basically, a bank is, six, is 16K that you can put in a specific memory address. You know, you can swap uh, memory. You still have only 64K available, but you can change one of those banks or pages. Um, so this is an example of how, how, you know, this is a simple that how is, it can be used. And um, it's taking into account uh, this system variable uh, in case that basic is around, but uh, when I usually, when I, I just don't care about basic, I, I don't plan to go back to basic. So I, I replace the interrupt handler with my own, so I don't need to take care of that. And well, here is explaining how you know what can you do. Um, so now the interesting part of this is that not only you have more memory, that in this case the spec is not very flexible because you can change uh, the 16k that you have in this in this address in C00, so that the the highest uh, 16k, you can change that to different page, a different bank. Let's call it bank. Okay, so you can change to a different bank, um, but you only can change on that address. So the ROM is going to be always there. Well, you can ch change between two different ROMs, so we don't care about that because we're not going to use it. Then uh, here in, in 4000 hex, you're always going to have bank 5. And 8000x, you're going to have bank two. So, is this is the only one that you can change, which is a little bit pain, right? Because it means that if you have code, the code to change page can never be on bank, or, you know, on this page, so on this memory address, because otherwise, when you remove that bank, basically your code is out. <laughs> so, you know, the specky will crash. And the same happens with the stack. So, you know, there are, it's a little bit, it's not as comfortable to use as in other AB machines. But anyway, at least we have the option. Now, so that's one thing. So we have a lot of memory, more memory, right? But also it has some functionality that here is called um, shadow screen, which means that I can swap bank five and bank seven, although bank five is always here, but I basically, I can tell the set 80 that it should be using bank seven instead of bank five to draw the stuff on the screen. So that would be the video memory. You know, other computers, other AB computers are more flexible than that. For example, in the, in the CPC, you can say where you want that memory. So you're not restricted to a specific bank or a specific address but in this case well this is what we have and this is what we're going to use so uh, what I have implemented with this is basically the first of all uh, this highest 16k I'm I'm not going to store any code or anything that I need to render uh, the scene you know all my buffers all the tiles and all that stuff it has to be here in, in bank two um, and that is because what I'm going to do is I'm going to map the uh, well you know I can map data so bank zero bank one bank two uh, well bank two no we can use zero one three four and six to store data um, for example the map but then when I get read the map and I, I need to have that map available when I'm drawing the screen so I can have that, for example, bank zero map here because what I plan is to have always map in C zero zero zero, whatever is the bank that has the video memory, but not the one that is visible, the shadow one, so the other one. So basically, um, when uh, bank five, that is the default, is enabled, what I do is I'm going to map uh, bank seven 
and then draw the scene on bank 7 or using C000 uh, memory address and when I'm finished I'm going to ask the set to swap those so the, what you see on the screen won't be bank 5 anymore it will be bank 7 uh, and that is very quick so I'm not sure how many cycles it is but it's almost you know instantaneous so that's perfect um, so uh, we I'm going to be still kind of slow drawing the scene so it's going to require um, actually in some cases more than three frames with the game logic and everything but then once you have your screen uh, drawn you can swap the banks and, and that's it that you have your the scene available and there is no tilling and it's just perfect and smooth so let's take a look so let's use this this emulator first all right there you are so all right oh let me switch the audio here so we don't get noise right so yeah so let's move as you can see uh there's no nothing at all for example if, if we move here uh from previous videos uh when i was syncing with uh, vsync there was a line here around here that it was quite visible so in this case there's nothing in there i mean you can tell that there is a difference in speed when i'm not scrolling you can re you can see listening to the steps of the character And when the, the scroll kicks in, there is a little bit of of slowdown, but I think I can improve that quite a lot. Um, basically, um, I can just improve the game loop uh, and reduce the amount of of time we need to update the the game uh, because drawing the the scene is very unlikely that it's going to be faster because I I just I don't have many options left. I mean, I think I can make it faster than, than it is at the moment. Right, so so this is quite interesting, but it means that because we swap the, the screens, right? It means that if, you know, every time I, 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 I swap bank, sorry, I swap the screen that is being shown on on the screen, it means that on that memory, the, the scene has to be complete. So it means that you need to draw things twice. And um, and that's a little bit of a problem because if we were doing things a little bit slow, then doing them twice uh, is not going to be faster, right? It's going to be double slow. So what I want to do or what I wanted to do and I think I managed to do that is um, I basically support both rendering directly to the screen and then using the back buffer so all the functions I have in my li the library I'm building which they start with the prefix setx all those still work with a uh, 4000 hex so they go to So all they go to oh no it's you, we can see it uh, let's see who can uh, let's see if I can oh, sorry ASCII art is not broken so yeah so they always draw in this screen and they don't they know the way because we can't change the bank that is mapping this address in four thousand hex so they always draw like that so in order for that to work we need to have this screen visible right whilst in the other code we basically have this one so we have this one visible and we map seven in here so we draw in seven and then we make seven visible so in the next frame we map here uh, five, we draw in, in five and we'll finish, we swap and make it visible. So 
you never see what I'm drawing on the screen. You only see the result. But these functions, all the selects functions, still work, and they will work with 48k, right? They're just basically the same code I had. Now I have some functions here called SS. Uh, I call them SS because I like the idea of shadow shadow screen, um, and basically I only have three functions. SS enable what it does is it enables the uh, well enables does a it's not I mean, I mean the concept is that they enable but it's not actually enabling anything. What it does here, what I do here, which is in assembler by the way. Um, is uh, we select uh, the bank seven, uh, and this function to select bank seven is actually quite simple. Uh, so this is a part of the SELEX library I'm, I'm willing. So so it's quite simple. I mean, it's just you select the bank <clears throat> in the accumulator, and then you just send the board, right? actually oh <laughs> interesting this is not needed so this is when we have uh, updated the system variable but we don't care about that because actually we don't even care about this because we don't use is that correct i think it is right because i, I, I was i was looking at the, at the documentation and it includes an example and that example, what it does is, um, yeah, of course, it's not needed at all. Because what it does is it's stopping the interrupts because it's updating some system variable that we don't care because I'm not using basic and I'm not going back to basic. So I just ignore those. That the, the, the original interrupt handler is something I disable. So, so we don't need that. So we faster now. Right. So yeah, it's very simple. It's even simpler than I thought uh, because it's just, you know, sending things to a port. Um, then what I do here is when the bank seven is enabled, I copy the content of the current screen to the shadow screen. And I also do that with the buffer. Why do I do that? Because um, that tile buffer I have, now what I do to avoid drawing twice is I keep two independent buffers. So basically, uh, the normal screen is going to draw differences based on one buffer, and the shadow screen is going to draw things based on a different buffer. It's not a unified buffer, but it's, the management is quite simple. And it's, it means that I'm going to draw way less than if I was drawing uh, both screens completely every time. And, you know, it's going to be 4,608 bytes, but we don't care. We had 128K, so we have a lot of memory now. Um, so yeah, we copy the buffers. So basically what we're doing when we enable the shadow screen is that the shadow screen is going to be exactly the same. Now, this magic number here is 13. It's a number that we we use. So we swap between 13 and 15. And when we send those values to ZX bank, what it does is that it maps one bank and enables the other screen, the screen associated to the other bank. So we just change those those uh, those that value changing between 13 and 15. And then what we do here is that we just when we finish with this, I don't want to leave or I can't really leave anything mapped on on C000 zero, 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 uh, zero, because it's really like that I need to use that for data. So I will probably map a different bank in there. So basically when I finish, I just go back to default configuration. Um, 
maybe I might need to change that and instead of going to the default bank I probably need to keep track of which bank um, I was using before swapping here uh, and then return to the bank but for now I'm just going to the default configuration now I have here another function that is called disable that basically checks if the screen that we're showing at the moment uh, so this is actually checking if the screen we're using at the moment is um, is the, is the normal one so the one in 4000 hex we just go out well we, there's nothing we need to do because you know we are just showing and and the one what that is enabled well that's not true because the one that is enabled and so the the one we're showing is is the one we need to show right so uh effectively it's like we don't need to do anything Otherwise, uh, we need to uh, copy the bank seven mem uh, screen to the normal screen, and then we s we set the buffer to the beginning because uh, we're going to switch the buffer. So so we can do some nice tricks. Um, so it's not just swapping. So when we draw in, it's not just swapping, uh, putting the right bank and swapping, which is the screen that we're showing. We also need to, I also swap the buffer. So we, I can use exactly the same code, just changing which is the buffer, which one is the one I'm working on. And then uh, what is left is, you know, those update screen small that we had before that is working on that area that we have the action uh, inside that, uh, the frame, um, you know, when where that's where the the, the character is moving. Uh, so it's the same thing we have. Optimize as much as I can, uh, but it's actually not drawing to the regular screen. It's drawing to the to the bank we map, and it's always the same address. So it really doesn't matter if it's drawing to bank uh, 5 or bank 7 and it really doesn't matter which is the screen that is visible although we always have visible the opposite to the one we have mapped so the the, the player is not dot, he can see what we're drawing and we don't have that effect of turning or, or glitches because we are you know drawing too slow so I mean this is exactly the same thing as fast as, as, fast as I can um, and at the end in here we basically we swap the screen swap the buffers and at the end we make visible syncing when vsync the you know the screen that we have uh, updated so that's pretty simple and then i have another thing here that is update the screen hat because when you're moving and doing a scroll um basically Every time you move, you need to redraw everything, you know, everything that changed, but it's quite a lot. So it's fine. We can redraw all the time, but with the, with the hat on the bottom of the screen, if you, you know, you are hit and your, and your health goes down, if you date that only once, because, you know, it means that you're going to show that in one frame and the other frame, sorry, in one frame. You're going to show, yeah, in one frame you draw and you're going to show that on one screen, but the other screen won't have that. So you have blink in between having it and not having it. So this code here, what it does is basically uh, it updates both the screens with the same buffer, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, that's what it does on the bottom screen, which is not a lot. It's definitely better than just copying the memory it's just drawing so so basically here we start we draw everything as normal you know the the direct rendering works just the same then we enable which basically means that we sync both the screens we draw the hub the hub which is basically uh 
I'm going to draw in both screens. We could be doing this in here, but because this function is aware of the two screens, we can use that if, we, if the shadow screen is not enabled. So we have to do it after enabling it. So, you know, we press escape and we leave. We have to disable that because the menu doesn't know anything about double buffer. Um, and again, uh, I could be using double buffer, you know, those two screens everywhere, but it would mean that I need to draw things every time and I'd rather not do that. So I think this is probably better. So in the cases that I don't need, you know, if I can draw everything on the screen reasonably fast, I can do the direct rendering. Otherwise, I use the shadow screen. So here, the same for game over, I disable. Um, then here, we update the screen. Here, that's fine. We draw the hat. So everything is, is okay. So it works the same. Actually, by the screen, yeah, it works because it works in the in the in the active uh, HUD. Now, this ZX way here that I have uh, commented out uh, is because I need to look at uh, about look at that. It doesn't look to me like it's working properly. So this effectively uh, enforces a, a cap in the frame rate, which is uh, a divider of three. So if usually it's 50 frames per second because it's 50 hertz uh, at the speed that you refresh the screen. With this, uh, we do 16. And for some reason, it doesn't look like it's working properly. Um, it looks like it's been a little bit slower, like we add in frames. So in theory, this should ensure that if we faster than 16 frames per second, it should be 16. And if we slower, it should be whatever it is, but no. And I think it's adding some slowdown, so I need to find out what's going on with that. Right. So this is the this is me explaining uh, how it works, and maybe I hope kind of uh, not explaining too bad. But let's take a look to to the this other emulator, which is called Retro Virtual Machine version two. Um, and this one has a very interesting functionality that we have we have shown in the past. That basically we can come here and we are we want to see 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 the menu here. I'm not sure you can see. Yeah, you can see it. So in this menu here, uh, we can see uh, what the ULA, which is the what is drawing the screen. The component of the of the specy, what is actually drawing on memory five, on bank five, and we also can see at the same time on bank seven. So here, let's get the focus. Yeah, has the focus now? Yeah, I think it does. See, it does yes, it does. Right. So as you can see here in the menu, we're doing direct rendering. Right. So uh, bank 7 is not being used, that's fine. So now when I start the game, we're going to see like basically, right, so this is interesting. So as you can see, I'm not sure, it's very subtle, but, but you can see that the one on the left at the moment is one frame and the next one is the one on the right because we're swapping them right so on the left we see the past frame <laughs> and on the right we see the current frame so as you can see uh, the animation is is a split so <laughs> this is quite cool I, I really like this is functionality in the simulator is is amazing so if you look up uh, on the left we we see that on on that memory we have the one frame of the animation and the other so basically we have three frames animation so one of them is standing and the other one is with the with the step that it alternates between left and right left so you can see on the left now <laughs> we see the frame which where is you know standing 
and you know when you see them together it looks like the guy is, is walking but here you can see as you know we show a frame of each right now we're going to grab one item which means that we're going to draw on the bottom which is the hat and it's going to draw in both of them so it's quite quick but you just I mean if we could slow this down you could see that it's drawn in one of them and then in and the other one but it's because we had to draw though two twice two times um, now if we look at the screen here so when we read well look at the terminal one thing we had to do because the terminal is using a uh, direct rendering it has to disable the shadow screen and what it's going to do is if I see it's just in on the shadow screen and well it, it has a timeout right and when the timeout goes down what it does when we enable back it syncs both so the content that you have on the left is the access denied so when we enable the shadow screen then it syncs copying to the other uh, bank and then you know the map rendering kicks in and you you lose that but so that's how it works I think this is great because it can show you how how it behaves and um, if for example let's go to the room and let's die so we being hit by the aliens in a blinky way and then we disable the shadow screen so the game over happens directly right so that works great and um, and that's pretty much it so um, let's see we can move here and uh, see it does the effect anyway I think it's great I'm very pleased with the results um, you know it moves very nice it doesn't have any tuning whatsoever and I mean it means now that I need to do a little bit of work because at the moment because it's this is this is just a test and if look you look here you can see that I'm using 14k so if I'm using 14k at the moment it means that I can put everything in <laughs> in one bank but eventually that's not going to be like that is not going to happen. I mean, when I start adding maps and adding tiles and adding that stuff, so that has to go into a different bank, which means that I will need to do uh, some work so the loader loads things into banks. Uh, and also, uh, I will need to implement, for example, uh, the management of those banks. Well, when you get into a new map, I probably need to map the bank that has the map data so I can compress that map into a working uh, memory address where you know it's available when we do the rendering um, and the same thing for some for the tile sets because at the moment I have all the tile sets in the same bank but that's probably very wasteful uh, for example uh, the font is in a different tile set so uh, I sh should probably have that um, so I think what probably need to do I probably need to do is put all the tie sets in the same bank and um, and then have some working a working tie set for example in the bank that we use for rendering and I think that will work just fine um, now for at the moment, I think, uh, yeah, at the moment, I think the simplest way to deal with the enemies, for example, is to have all the game code in the same bank. But then, if I only have 16 Ks for that, it may be a little bit tricky because I need the space for the buffers. So, not completely sure what I'm going to do with that. Uh, I know that the compiler I'm using SDCC has 
bank support, but I've also been told that it's a little bit broken. So I may need to find a workaround or a way of doing that myself in a different way. And in that case, um, it may be a little bit tricky. Not sure. Mm. I need to think about that. Um, but ideally, yeah, I'm not sure. I think that <laughs> restricting everything to 16K can be a little bit extreme, but it may not be that bad if I if I'm very strategic about the tile sets in the memory. Hmm. Because I probably don't need a lot. So at the moment here, what we're using in this map is, you know, we have some, you know, we have the data for the frame, the hat, the character, the objects. Uh, but the, the the actual tiles that draw the map is actually less than 16, uh, 16 tiles, uh, which is 16 per 16 pixels. So I probably don't need, probably don't need all the tile set all the time. So that cool. I don't know if it's too complicated. I just I can just ha uh, find a way of you know implementing my own banking or overlays or something, so I can have code in a different bank memory bank maybe. I mean for the music it's very easy because I probably can um, isolate the player and oh because by the way, I mean I'm using Beeper for the effects but you know. The game is going to be 128k, so I have the um, AY chip for audio, so I'm going to have proper three channels music. Uh, but yeah, I can I can make the player in a different bank with the music in a different bank, so that's great. That's going to work just fine. Um, so yeah, it looks. I mean, it works better than I was expecting, to be honest. Um, and actually. I knew you didn't have the option to uh, move the video memory freely to whatever you wanted, but I didn't know that you have the option of using the the shadow screen, which is great. I mean, it works nicely and it's not too complicated. I mean, uh, the code is not too difficult. Um, just I just need to be careful with enable and disable uh, this. So I need to enable when I'm going to use the double buffer and disable when I want to do direct rendering, and and that's fine. And the code is not it's not too difficult. So yeah, it looks great. I mean, to be honest, I think the hardest part was to move everything and reallocate everything to the same bank because uh, I can't really rely on, on the linker placing things for me so I had to specify some memory addresses but other than that it was quite reasonable not too difficult to do it so this is all for this session I think uh, it's been not really coding more like a show and tell um, explaining what I did this week I don't think it was the kind of, of session that it would have been interesting to to share for different reasons first of all because I didn't know if it was going to work so <laughs> um, I think it would be terrible to spend uh, you know record maybe a two hour session and at the end it doesn't work um, so you know that's one thing and the other thing is that uh it was a little bit tricky so i made a lot of mistakes and and it's difficult if i don't know what i'm doing uh explain what i'm doing so i think it's been better doing that off the record so i think uh at least this show and tell may may be interesting it may be interesting for someone um so what is next um well uh I probably need to work on that loader so it loads things into banks 
um, and some strategy to manage um, to manage the different data that I need to put in those banks, uh, which means that I may again write a lot of Python um, because it means that the Mac exporter uh, I'm using at the moment may not need to generate uh, um, uh, C include so I can use that in the linker it's probably more like generating a binary pack uh, data that I can load into the bank and then with an index at the beginning I can find whatever map I'm, I'm, I want to use maybe I mean we know where we're going to map that bank so it could be based on that memory address maybe it could even have uh, we could even have on that bank the code that actually unpacks um, the map why not so in map draw map we know that that draws into the buffers so uh, this code to expand the map, the code to init map, this put super tile, this is actually drawing in the buffer and it's using the standard libraries that are not aware of the shadow screen. So I think this can go 100% into a different bank. Yeah, actually, I need to think about this because I think in reality, the only thing I need to have in in out of the of C zero 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 is the code that is going to draw on the screen. Everything else, I just can sort banks. So yeah, so that's one thing I need to do. I need to think about that, come with a plan that makes sense, that is not manual, that is very, uh, you know, so I can, because I'm not sure how things are going to grow in memory. So yeah, I need to find a way of dealing with that. And just that will be the next thing. And, you know, after that is probably continuing with the engine. Um, I need to do something for the terminals at the moment. It's very basic. It would be nice if, if you know they have some specific format or you know a, a nice way of, of showing information, uh, which is nice. Also, that we have 128k, it means that I can include way more text, and uh, so we can expand that story, uh, hopefully in an interesting way. Um, and what else? Yeah. So those are the things that are in the queue. Uh, so let's see you next time. So that's all for today, uh, for this session. Um, I hope you enjoyed uh, the, exp well, did you enjoy and you could understand anything of my explanation about the <laughs> the shadow screen and the double buffer. Um, and I don't know, see you next time. Bye.